Happy Saturday, everyone. This is Karen with Grace B. Creations. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend so far. It is Saturday. I am doing two videos tonight, today. Um, I'm actually doing a video at one o'clock in the afternoon. I know, shocker. Um, I didn't get to do two video. Um, I didn't get to do a video yesterday. If you notice, I didn't end up uploading. I got really busy with a couple of things yesterday, and so I decided today I was going to do two videos instead. So I'm going to do a tutorial this afternoon, and then tonight we're going to be working in the junk journal, and we're going to be picking for the Mon making it Monday. We're picking from the bowl. Um, for making it Monday. So today we're going to make this really awesome um, belly band tag. Um, I showed this to you guys when I was doing the what's in my craft bin and I remember seeing it being like yes I want to show you guys how to make this because this is a project that you can use for many different things. You can use it for a belly band in your book. You can use it for a bookmark. You can use it for a regular tag. You can do a pocket and use it as a pocket insert. So many things you can do with this. You can even put a little flip out on the back of it and have it flip up and flip out into your book. So many things you can do with this project. So if you notice here in here in this project we have um, a regular piece of cardstock and we did some layering and we have um, regular cardstock. We have some layering embossed paper here. We have some book writing. We have some book paper. We have um, more of the ripped embossed paper on the side. The flowers I added recently because the ones that I had on here when I first made it um, they got squished and ruined and they were like it was in the bin and you know after a while wear and tear. Um, the flowers that I had on there were ruined, so I just added the Campo flowers on there. You don't have to have flowers on the tag. You can use any kind of embellishment you want. You can do buttons, you can do butterflies, you can do, um, you know, fake silk flowers, you can do um, an applique on there, you can just, or you can just leave it blank and just do the layering if you want. Completely up to you. I'm gonna show you how to make this with the layering and, all you're gonna need is you're gonna need cardstock. You want a corner chump. You want um, a book, um, a word stamp, whether it's um, wooden, or you can do your um, see-through. Um, you're gonna want some ripped paper, some embossed ripped paper, maybe some bags that are ripped, um, some lace maybe if you want. You want um, your eyelet maker and you want either um, nope you're going to want regular cardstock paper that's blank and then you're going to want to choose um, a printed one for the top and the bottom so pick out the paper that you really want I'm going to use this one and then I'm going to show you how to layer this up so the first thing you're going to do is you want to make your belly band to be the same length as your book. You want the belly band to be able to touch from top to bottom of your page. You can make it as wide as you want, but the length you want to stick to the side of your um, size of your page in your book. So I'm going to do three, probably three and a half actually. Uh, is it three and a half? I'm gonna do three. I think I like. Yeah, I'm gonna do the three. So three, and I'm gonna do nine and a half. I think my book is ten though. Is it ten? Hold on. I just want to make sure. I believe it's ten. I don't know why I keep forgetting how how long my book is. I believe it's, yeah, it's 10. All right, so I'm gonna do 10. So three by 10 is gonna be the size of my um, belly band tag. All right, so 
So you have your piece of cardstock, and now you're going to chomp the corners. This is one of my favorite uh, corner chompers. I've used many other ones, like I have the um, the one by We Are Memory, uh, the Crocodile by We Are Memory Keepers. I like this one, but it still doesn't do it for me. I really like this one a lot. It has three different choices, and I just love the ease of it. It just works really good for me, and I've gone through a lot. There are some I bought, returned. They would eat my paper. This one just does a really good job. Okay, so I have my corners done. Now we're going to get our cardstock that's printed, the design that we want on the front. You're going to want only the top part and the bottom part to have this paper here, okay? So you want to rip it in half where you want your design. Like I'm gonna probably want, let me see. I definitely want some of the rows on here. So I think I want the rows to be on top. Probably, let me see, I probably want to rip it widthwise here. Okay. And I'm going to want to tear it. Probably want. You basically just have to choose what you want the top part to be and what you want the bottom part to be. The bottom part is going to be longer than the top. You only want like this much to have. Um, let me get my let me get my um, measuring tool. You want like you want about like two and a half inches to three inches to be um, just empty to do your book stamping. So you just want to take like the top part. I want some rows on the top. So I'm going to tear it here. Okay. And I'm going to put the rows part on top. You see what I'm doing? Okay, right about right about there. I'm gonna want to glue it there, but I'm only gonna glue the top part of it because I want to be able to layer as well. But I'm just gonna hold it down first. And of course, we're gonna trim this up. Okay. Now I'm going to go around the back and I'm going to trim it. You're going to trim it to the edge and we're going to be re-cornering these. Okay? You want to get it nice and close to Now I'm going to recorner these to match the corner on the book book page. I mean um, cardstock. So see, you have the top part, and then we have a little bit of a lift right here. I want to keep it that way because I want to layer. This one actually might be a little bit. This one's this one's a lot skinnier, so this one's a little bit bigger. Um. I'm doing a wider one this time. Actually, this is pretty wide. Did I want it that wide? I didn't realize how wide I made that. I'm trying to think. I have a slim journal. I'm thinking maybe I should trim it a little bit. I think I'm going to go pull it back a little bit. 
think I'm going to pull it back about I'm going to do like maybe a half an inch on both sides. I think I made that a little too wide. Yeah. This looks more in line. So maybe you want to go with two and a half for the width. So I'm going to recorner this again because I had to cut it. And the bottom. I didn't realize how wide I made that other one. That's better. Much better. Okay. So now I left some of the bottom undone because I want to do some layering. And then next we're going to do the bottom part. So I want to add some of this little bit of writing that's on here. I don't want to do more rows because it's just doing too much of the rows. So I kind of want to go on the right side of the paper this time. I want to leave about this much blank right here, okay? Now what I'm going to do before I put this down, I'm just gauging it. Before I do any of that, any more of that, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the center part. I really should have stamped it first. I, I forgot that I stamped it beforehand. Or did I? I don't know. But I'm going to lift this up a little bit. I'm not folding it. I'm just lifting it up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and stamp. And it doesn't matter how long, how far down you go because this is going to cover some of it. You're just going to go ahead and just put a big old word stamp right there. And if you cover some of it, that's okay because you want some of it to show anyways. I don't know if I want to use my block stamp. This hasn't been working that great lately. I washed it and everything and it just seems to not ink as well. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and use this one. I've had this one for a long time. I think the rubber is just starting to become like weird on it because it's not stamping as well. So I'm just going to do this so I don't have to play around with having to restamp it. All right. Get that good and inked like that. And I'm just going to go over about right here. Actually, I should go down a little further. Okay, I'm going to go about right here. I'm just going to lay the stamp down. I'm just going to word stamp this. Perfect. I like using the brown color. It's kind of like, uh, let me see what color am I using? Ground Espresso. Now see that's going to cover that. Isn't that cool? Alright, so that this doesn't distract me. Flip that over. Alright. Now, we're going to do the bottom part. I'm going to go about Right here, let me see. I think I want to go about right there. I think that leaves a good amount for layering. Could you want to incorporate the layering? I might actually tear this up a little tiny bit. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to ink the bottom. Like this. Hold on. Before I do that, I just wonder, tear that up a little bit. Okay, is that too much or is that good? With the layering. Yeah, it should be good. All right, so I'm gluing this down. OK, 
Okay. And then I'm going to do the same as I did with the top. I'm trying to get this to the very edge so I don't have to worry about cutting this side. And I'm going to trim it just like I did with the other one. And you can use your trimmer as well if you want. You can use your scissors or your trimmer. I just I'm just going with the scissors. It's just as easy. I'm going to take your chomper again so that you can corner the bottom. Like that. See? Now you want to leave this just a little bit open. I forgot to say that. I apologize. You don't want to fully glue the top part here. You want to leave a little bit open on the bottom. Okay? I haven't done this project in a long time, so I'm actually re-remembering as I'm doing it. I used to make these all the time. Okay, so now we're going to do our layering part. So you're going to get some embossed paper, some book paper if you want. Let me see, what do I want to use? I want to do some embossed paper. I don't, I think I might want to go with white because the page is already ivory. No, I don't want that embossment. I want something pretty. I think I saw a few of you guys over on Esme sale last night. She had her sale last night. Yeah, I'm going to use some of this here. So I'm going to do I'm going to do the book paper first because I just realized there's white on the edge there. So I'm going to do the book paper actually first. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a rip. On there as well. Because I want to just have a little bit of white there as well. Alright, so get out the book paper. No, I don't have any book paper in my little... Oh, wait a minute, I do. I know I had everything ready. I did, I did. So we're just going to rip some book paper. Remember, keep an eye on your words. I always say that every time I do anything with the book paper. I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson on having not so nice words on a project. Okay. All right, so I have a piece of wording there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue underneath. I'm going to find my spot. Right there. And then I'm going to glue. Let me see, actually. No, do I want to do... Okay, I'm going to come a little bit further down. Because I want the other paper to go on top. So you glue the book page down, and then we're going to be putting the embossed paper on top of the book page. Like this. See how you're layering that like that? So now we're going to layer the embossed part on top of the book paper. And you're going to have it sticking out just a little bit. Like that. And sometimes I like to just curl it up a little bit. 
You can play with it once it's all glued down. Okay, I want to see if I want to do anything else. Do I want to add a little bit of bag? I don't know if I can just add a slim piece of bag underneath there. So basically you're just keeping this part up and you're layering it to show the different layers underneath. So I think I'm gonna glue a small piece of bag and I'm probably gonna roll it up, but this one's already ripped, so let me get a different piece. I love doing this effect. Um, I used to do these all the time on tags, on, um, if you see a lot of my tags, I do this on my tags. I just love the, the look of it. Just gives it that vintage ripped paper look. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to glue the bag part on top of the white embossed paper. So it's like we're making a sandwich, right? And we're just peeking out the very ends of the layers. Now the brown paper, I can go down a little further because I'm gonna roll it up. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm just rolling the brown paper up like this. Now I'm gonna glue this on top before I roll it up, just like this. So now we have everything glued down. See the layers there? I know it looks funny now, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim it. You're gonna turn it around and you're gonna trim off the ends. And that's how it looks. Isn't that so cool? I just love doing these. Just gives it this really cool effect. And you can play around with it. You can lift the embossed white part or you can leave the white part. Actually, this one got folded up. You can leave it down. You can make it thicker so you can show more of it. Like on the bottom part, I'll probably show a little bit more. So I'll do the book page again down here. We're gonna do the same thing for the bottom. I'm going to do the book page first. Let me get a different a different one. Let me see. Oops. And you want to get you want to tear a piece of book paper that doesn't have like any paragraphs, like spaces. You want all the words to be together. I don't think I want the word shortcomings on the front of that. It doesn't sound very positive. Okay. Or he had eight legs. Okay, that doesn't sound good either. Um, this might be a little better. <laughs> now I'm like self-conscious of what I'm putting down. It might keep them quiet. <laughs> That's what it says. I don't know if I want that either. Come on. All these papers that I'm ripping are going to be put in my bag of, I have a bag of scraps, so it's not like I'm wasting it. I use them, trust me. Only you make up your minds to be. Ooh, that actually sounds cool. Let's do that one. So, we're just going to glue the book page part. The 
the word strength is there too. Ooh, this is a good one. All right, so I laid down the book page. And now we're gonna get our embossed paper. I'm gonna go up a little further on the words. Yeah, I think that's good. Like this, I like just tear it a little straight, just like that. And then we're gonna glue the back of the embossed paper. and place it on top of the book paper. Make sure you're reaching both sides. And then we're gonna grab the bag paper. See, is that good enough as far as we need? Let me get a thicker piece. You're gonna stuff it inside. Actually, I should have put this one. No, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna move this one up a little bit more. No, oh, wrong thing, wrong thing. Okay, it doesn't matter because I'm rolling it up. I keep on forgetting about that. I thought I was going over the embossed paper, but I'm rolling it over the top of this. So, okay, so now I'm going to glue down the bag part on top of the embossed paper. But then you're just gonna do the very center part because you're gonna roll this up and backwards. You see how I just did that? So I just rolled that brown bag backwards and I'm gonna glue underneath here. And you're gonna go underneath this flap as well so we can put it down on, on top of everything. Just like this. And just don't have it stick to the, to the paper. So it's gonna look like that, okay? And then we're gonna trim the sides. It's a little getting used to to do this process, but once you get it, it's so fun. You'll have so much fun layering. And then if you have like a little pieces that aren't glued, after you do this, you just go underneath and you just glue it, glue it down so that everything just meshes nicely together. Okay, so that's how it should look. See how you get the nice layers of the book paper and I kind of wish that this was a little more, um, the book page was a little more slanted like this one. I kind of went straight on that. I kind of wish I went a little bit, I can always go back and just rip another small piece if I really wanted to. If I haven't fully glued it down and I can just put one more piece in there and maybe just go like this to add to it. I don't want it, I didn't want it straight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put another piece down on top and then re-trim it. And that looks a little more layered. See how I put another piece on top of that? Yeah, I like that. Okay, 
Now, the next part. The next part we're gonna do is I'm gonna take some colored embossed paper or um, you can use tissue paper. Remember how I taught you how to do the tissue paper on half of the tag? If you don't have any colored embossed paper, you can use some, like I have some embossed tissue paper here. You can go ahead and do like a little piece here. We're gonna actually put a small embossed paper here and one small one there. Now I have some embossed colored paper, but I'm gonna do tissue paper. Well, I don't know, that one's not that great. You can either do, let me see, I don't know if I wanna do, that doesn't really match. This is like some embossed paper I have, but I don't know if I wanna do that or if I want to go with the tissue and do that same effect that we did the other day on the tag. For some reason this one's a little bit like worn down you can't really see the embossed part. I could grab some but I think I'm just going to do this. If you guys want to use the tissue paper if you don't have any embossed colored paper um, Go ahead and use that. You can use napkin or you can use um, the tissue paper like we did the other day. I just don't have any embossed tissue right now. These ones like almost seem to ripped in the center of them. It's got like all kinds of holes. I don't want to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and use this paper here. It matches pretty good to the paper that I chose. So what you're going to do is you're going to rip to the design of your liking, like the size you're liking. You're just gonna put a small piece here in the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this down. Leave a little hanging over on the edge so that I can trim it. Cause you'll want that part to be straight. And we're gonna have to re-corner it again. Okay, so I'm just going to take this, turn it around, I'm going to trim it, and then re-corner it again, like that. Isn't that cute how you have the embossed paper here on the side? And you're going to do the same for the top, up here in the corner. I'm just going to tear a small little piece, probably, let me see, I don't want to cover the rose. I'm just gonna put a small little piece up here on the top. I don't wanna cover that rose, so I'm just adding a small piece right up here. Like that. It's the small little things, right? It's such a tiny little thing to do, and it makes such a big impact on your project. And then you're gonna recorner it. Like that. Just a little piece of embossed paper on the top. And we're gonna be putting a hole in there anyways for the tag. So this is what it should look like. Isn't that cute? Look how cute that is. I love it. And if you want, if you don't want your words like lying, you know, straight down, you can just take the ends of them and roll them up. You know, you want it to look like it's ripped, just to give it that little ripped look, like that. All right. 
Next, we're gonna make our hole to make the tag. Try to center it. Make it a little bit bigger. All right, I'm gonna get an eyelet. Dun, 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 dun. Which one do I wanna use? Do I wanna do a flower? Or do I want a regular one? The flower might be cute. Should I do a flower or should I just do a regular one? I'm gonna do a flower. I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but they're, they're little flower eyelets. See, you can get them on Amazon. If I remember, I'll leave the link below. I'm horrible about remembering all the stuff I need to put in the description. The flower hole is a little bit bigger, so I have to go in and make the hole a little bit wider. It has a larger stem on it. Yeah, I have to make it a little bit bigger. I'm also going through that tissue as well, um, embossed paper. Okay. Wow, it's still not big enough. That should be good. There we go. I'm just going to go in. And stamp it down. There we go. Now we have a cute little flower. Next, we're going to get our lace or our ribbon, whichever you choose to put your, on your topper. I think I'm going to use... Let me see, I rearranged some of my drawers today. And I forgot where I put my ribbon. All right. I'm trying to think. I think I'm going to go with... I don't know if I want to use sorry sack or... I think I'm going to go with regular. I don't think that'll... I might use, yeah, I'll use this one. I'm gonna use this lace here for my topper. I'm gonna just fluff it out. I add my glue. This. All right. Look how cute this came out. So we have our top. It's not exactly straight, so let me straighten it out. Look at that. It's adorable. I love how this is coming out. I love the paper. I like how, how I have a blue one and a pink one. All right, so now to add the flowers. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I want to add on the front or you can also do a charm too if you want to get like a little um, rusty clip and add like a little charm like, um, let me see, I got, I have this little 
paper, like a um, little ball pen that has like a little piece of lace down the bottom. I can just take this and I can just run it around the bottom of the tag topper. And you have a cute little little lace bow on the bottom of that. All right, so now I'm going to add you can add a charm to that too. It doesn't have to be a lace lace bow, but All right, so I'm going to get some flowers. Now, I always use pink all the time. I think I'm going to do I always use this pink, but it matches though. No, I want to use the pink. I want to use the pink. All right, I just bunched up a bunch of these today. I don't know if you saw over on my Instagram, but I was going through all of my Campo flowers. I'm starting to get low, and I know it doesn't seem like it, but when I bought some, I had like bushels of them. I've been using them a lot. I have to make it last until spring because they only have them in the springtime. I looked on Michael's and they now are out of stock. People ask me about them all the time. I'm trying to, I'm gonna look on Amazon today to see if I can find some of these somewhere else. Michael's cannot be the only people, um, the only craft place that sells them. They're by Ashland. So maybe Ashland's uh, website, maybe I might be able to find some on there. All right, so I'm gonna find a piece of lace, um, either lace or um, a bow, a piece of ribbon to tie around it. I think I'm just gonna use a piece of ribbon, um, a piece of thread. I don't wanna let go of it because it's so hard to put them together. I have like a little piece of fabric. Ooh, ooh, I have a piece of fabric here. I don't know if you guys can see me in the corner, but in my little remnants box. I can either do that or this. This is pretty too. Look at that. I think that would look nice. I don't want too much pink. All right, I'm gonna go with this one. I'm going to tie it with a bow and I'm going to wrap it with this lace. All right. Try and do this as careful as I can because once you let go of these, they're so hard to put together. They fly everywhere. These aren't the easiest flowers to work with, but they are so cute. They break easily too when you're sorting them out. Like when you're pulling, putting them in a bushel and you pull them out to take out the amount you want, they, they break. They're messy. But they're real dried flowers. They're not fake. All right, so I tied that in a bow like that. I'm going to trim the end a little bit so it's even. And then I'm going to wrap it in this really pretty lace. Let's see, I might want to keep that on the top so I can wrap it and put a bow on it. Okay. I'm going to glue the lace. Sorry if I'm off. Nope, I'm not off film. Okay. Nope, I don't want to do it on that. Oop, I have a piece of pink on there. Where'd you come from? All right. Oh my gosh, everything is sticking. Nope, 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 nope. You stay up. I'm going to wrap this around. Like that. And I'm going to make, I'm going to try and make a bow. I didn't leave too much room here. Oh my goodness, did I actually just do that? Oh, no, 
don't go away. Oh my gosh, I did that on one shot. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I just did that. Make it tighter, like that. I like my holes to be a little bit smaller. There, all right. So now I have my flowers and I'm gonna place them down right here, just so it goes over the top of the ripped part. So I'm gonna put a line right here, just enough to really hold it down good. I'm gonna press on the base of the lace wrap. Hold it there for a couple of seconds. Like that. And if you don't want it hanging down the bottom, And this is your belly band tag. Just like that. Isn't that adorable? Like I said, you can put a charm on this as well. I'm not sure I'm liking the white with the, with the ivory, so I actually might change this and add a charm instead. I'll have to find one. I don't think I have one up here. Or what you can do, I just got those keys yesterday from Timu. I can hang a little tiny key. Ooh, look at that little flower key. There we go. I can do that instead. So what I'll do, all right, where did that little bulb thing go? Well, I'll have to find it after. I just had it in my hand. Oh, here it is. Okay, so... I'm going to take the bulb pen and just hang the little key on that, like that. I'm just going to run it along the bottom base of the tag topper. Just like this. Isn't that cute? Look at the design on that key. How cute. And there is your belly band tag. So now when you have your page, like I'll get an example here. Like here is a slim journal. It's not as, this is not the right size. I have to cut it to the right size. Like if you were to go like right, that's your page in your book. You're gonna glue it down on both sides and you have your belly band. How cute is that? And then you have your little tag topper sticking out the side. Or if you don't want to use it as a belly band, you can have it as a bookmark, or you can have it as regular tag. Anywhere you want to put it in the book. These are so fun to make it's the the layering part is probably the only tedious part of it it's you have to really have patience to lie everything down and layer it just right but once you do it a couple of times it's so easy I love doing this effect on all of my tags I really hope you guys have liked this project I would love to see you make some and post it over on the Grace Bee Creations Facebook group um, I will leave that link below. Definitely go on over and join. We have a bunch of people over there having a great time posting all their projects, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to send this video up to YouTube so that you guys can see it this afternoon, and I will have another video later on tonight doing work on the junk journal, and we will be pulling the, um, the project for Monday's Making It Monday. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Have a great afternoon. Bye.